Padres have a couple of beers and discuss a stadium somewhere in the world and their experiences there. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And we are excited to be here with you tonight. Before we get started, please make sure to subscribe to the Stadium Journey YouTube channel. Like this video, even if you don't really like it. You won't tell anybody. And leave comments. The official Stadium Journey review of today's venue can be found at stadiumjourney.com or you can find the link right in the comments below. So let's get rolling. Dave, what are you drinking today? So today I have a beer that I, I brought back from a, well, I, it's actually a beer that I had in a stadium and just brought back the remnants. So CFL season is kicked off and, you know, like it seems like everywhere, uh, every ball team, every minor league ball team now seems to have their own beer. Well, it is a trend. The Hamilton Tiger Cats have their own beer. They have uh, Lincoln Lager, which is from the Bench Brewing Company, which is uh, local to Hamilton. And hey, you know what? It I don't normally I don't normally drink beer at the game, but I saw it and went, "Yep, got to do it." And uh, it was a bonus because I didn't drive, so my brother in law drove, and just, yeah, it's a light, you know, simple lager, uh, pretty good on a hot day. What do you got? Yeah, I'm like you, Dave. I find myself uh, buying buying more beer at the stadiums now than I ever did before because everybody's got their specialty brews. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about a place that I've been a million times. And so, of course, for this show, I didn't pick a beer from there. <laughs> uh, I'm in close to my hometown of Fall River, Massachusetts here, and I've got a German Pilsner, which is one of my favorite kind of beers, from Troy City Brewing. Brewing, he tried to say. So uh, Fall River, a little history lesson. Fall River was originally called Troy way back in the day. So Troy Brewing is kind of a, a spin on the former name of the city. So uh, again, it's Pilsner, nice and light, great for the summer. And uh, as of the day of recording, it's been 95 here today in the uh, greater Fall River area. So perfect beer for a day like today. If you are visiting today's destination, you would have no shortage of choices because this is a uh, a craft beer paradise, this city. But right near the ballpark, you may be drinking a, ch a chickadee bitter nitro from Bunker Brewing Company right up the street from today's destination. We're talking about Hadlock Field, home of the Portland Sea Dogs. Before we dive in, let's take a look at the stadium vitals. <laughs> Okay, so today's destination, uh, Portland, Maine, Hadlock Field. Hadlock Field is always considered, if you ask the folks who travel the uh, AA circuit or the, the overall minor league circuit, Portland, or Hadlock Field, I should say, is always ranked up near the top of all the destinations of the, of the uh, AA teams. I would argue, though, that that ranking is based more upon where it is than what it is. Yeah, I, I I can't say I spend a, a ton of time in Portland. So uh, when it comes to the the greater Portland area and and all of the the fun of Portland, uh, you're gonna you're gonna carry the day on that one. But I will say, you know, I found I found the ballpark. Um, it was fun. It was okay. It was it was fine. There was nothing, you know, nothing wrong wrong with it. You know, uh, I would say my wife would probably not care for it because uh, one of her favorite things about minor league ballparks now is the is the 360 degree walk which you don't have in Portland which you right. don't have uh it's it's kind of a I mean it it reminds me of Fenway in a way in that it's kind of funky it's got some weird things happening intentionally uh, done over the course, years of course we got the main monster which is you know directly a result of their affiliate with the with the Red Sox right uh which I uh, you know I haven't studied the numbers or anything like that but I got it you got to think that their business just just skyrocketed once they hooked up with the with the Red Sox and I believe they were with the Marlins before that yes when they uh first were granted a franchise when the Eastern League expanded in 1994 I believe it was might have been a little earlier than that. It, it coincided with the expansion of Major League Baseball, and the Marlins were indeed affiliated with the Florida Marlins for the first 
few years of the franchise. And then they got that New England golden ticket when the Red Sox moved their team up to uh, to Portland. And yeah, it's been gangbusters ever since. And the ballpark has transformed over the years because to make it Fenway-esque, first thing they did was they put up a giant wall in left field. On the other, I mean, the wall is kind of functional because on the other side of the wall is Interstate 295. So there was not much of a backdrop there. And, you know, I don't think any balls ever made it onto the highway, but, you know, a, a giant wall will stop a lot of them from getting up there. So was the was the wall like touristy or was it really about was it about baseball? Was it about, OK, these guys are going to play in Fenway one day. This is what we got at Fenway. We need our left fielder to be able to field off of a big wall. Maybe a little of column A and a little of column B uh, because the dimensions of Hadlock do not mimic Fenway at all, not even close. But they kind of made the, the ballpark. And this is, first of all, any uh, Sea Dog fans, any baseball fans, I like Hadlock well enough. I just think it tries too hard. It's very kitschy. They've put a lot of goofy little features in it to try to make it look you know, minor league and uh, give it give it a little character in a ballpark that otherwise wouldn't have a ton of it. So you've got you've got the lighthouse in center field, which is a cool touch in Maine. Comes up every time a Sea Dogs player hits a home run. Um, the bullpens are pretty unique. They are neither one of them is on ground level. They are up on a platform beyond the right center field fence. Then in right field, you've got a replica of the green monster seats. Only they're in right field, so there's a section of seats that randomly goes up. In right field, you've got you've got a section of seats that we actually got to sit in during the pandemic. We went there right pretty quickly after they opened up because we were just jonesing for baseball. And they had all these really crazy draconian uh, features going on. And so we ended up in that little section that is probably right behind first base and facing directly at home plate. So, uh, yeah, if you want to see the outfield, you got to do one of these. But it was a pretty different. It was a different place to sit. And it was pretty cool. And you're right on top of the action there. But otherwise, you know, the concourse has an odd, really odd shape. It's like a big J. The seats in left field go all the way out to the wall. Seats in right field only go a little bit beyond first base. The reason being the Portland Expo Center is sitting right there, right, right on top of the ballpark. Um, for you NBA G League fans, that's where the main used to be the main Red Claws. Now they're the main Celtics. What a downgrade and nickname that was, but <laughs> that's where they play. So yeah, out of necessity, the ballpark's got a strangely shaped grandstand and stuff. So, I mean, it all adds up for the casual fan. It's all, all these things are cool to look at and then give the place a little character and makes it just not just another plain old ballpark. Yeah. Uh, it, interesting that you said it was about where it was now. Not having a whole lot of main experience. I mean, you know, growing up in Ontario, um, I, you don't I always get out to Maine, huh? I always figured out. I always figured that Maine was like the murder capital of the world, right? Between Stephen King and and Murder, she wrote. It seemed like every time there was something happening in Maine, somebody was dying. <laughs> so, I never thought about that. I never had. I never had a ton of, of, of experience. I mean, obviously I know that, um, I know that it's a big, the big seafood spot. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were told that the, the shopping around, you know, Portland was, was, was solid. Uh, yeah. so like the ballpark itself, um, does not have like a spectacular neighborhood around it. It's, it's no. for, for the most part, it's residential. With a with a you know a couple things here you know a little yeah. neighborhood kind of bar restaurant but, or whatever but yeah and the stuff that's there Dave it, like to your point absolutely the stuff that's there now is kind of recent so mm -hmm. if you had gone a little ways back you wouldn't have seen any of it there's a a decent barbecue restaurant right there and there's a couple of breweries within walking distance but most of the action is down in the old port section the ballpark is right off the interstate in a different neighborhood but you know you go you travel I think it's maybe three miles and you're in the old port which is where where do you want to be if you're in the city of portland we'll get into that in a minute i'm sure yeah my son and i we we were this was a drop-off one for us so uh you know we we got there and and we were dropped off and my wife and daughter went off to to do some shopping 
So, I mean, it was a bonus that, that we could go to baseball instead of going shopping. So that, that was cool. Um, went out front and, and, you know, hung out with slugger for a bit and <laughs> waited the, the, the cool statue, uh, right out front, um, waited for a focal point you know, for a little ballpark like that. Yeah. Huh? But waited for the, the gates to open. Uh, I will say that the, they have a, a an interesting bronze statue there, like the, the family, yes, which is a, a neat concept. And we, we just talked about Toledo not that long ago. So same kind of deal, uh, you know, for the people of Maine, but I gotta say like the people in that statue look kind of creepy. Yeah. It's not <laughs> the most attractive statue, but yeah, it's a cool thing. And it's, uh, it's a family of uh, sea dog fans, I guess, get ready to go into the game. They just picked up their tickets. The statue's located next to the ticket booth. Right. T- ticket office or ticket booth, whatever you want to call it. And uh looks like they get ready to go in and enjoy the game. Right. And and I, I would say another thing about you know inside is that it's uh they have they have the, the the terrific you know minor league team hall of fame, which is always fun if you're uh you know if you're a fan, especially if you're not from that area and you can kind of if if you're a Boston person, you know, or you you live in Portland or whatever, you're gonna be able to rhyme off who's all there if you're not from the area it's it's kind of fun because you're you have oh wow this guy was here oh yeah yeah oh the marlins were all oh, right the marlins right josh beckett right yeah yeah some good names from the marlins one of those world series teams had a bunch of the players pass through portland on their way actually up. the the hall of fame and i i did my research it it's pretty heavy marlins it's about half and half uh marlins red Sox. now inside I don't know if they're retired numbers or what, but it seems like nope. they've got these numbers of every single person who played for the Red Sox, who played for Portland. Because what? one of them that really threw me off was there's a number for David Ortiz. And I'm like, what yeah. the heck? Why would like David Ortiz didn't come up through the Red Sox or the Marlins? He came up through the Twins. But he might he have done a rehab there. Minor league ball. But yeah, like what? They, they, they put up a little thing because he did a three day rehab right. in Portland. Yes. Really? Uh, yes. Um, so that, that display changes every year. And so they take the Boston roster and every player who had played in Portland on their way up to Boston has their Jersey on the facade of the press box. So some years there's 10, some years there's 20, some years there's a whole lot, but Ortiz must've done a rehab appearance there. So he qualified. What was really cool back in the day, like when Josh Beckett played for the Red Sox, they had his Florida jersey up there. So all the guys were in there with the red numbers. Beckett had the teal blue numbers up. Nice. So that was a nice touch. And and Portland does a lot. They, it's one of those ballparks, and I've probably been to Hadlock more than any other minor league ballpark with the exception of McCoy Stadium. So, you know, I know a lot about it. And it's got – it's one of those ballparks when you've been there a lot. It's got a lot of those touches, those little minor league touches – that you appreciate on repeated repeated visits. Um, in addition to the Hall of Fame, they've got like, pictures of every ballpark in the Eastern League, which I always enjoy looking at when I go there. Um, the guy who sells sells the programs right when you come in the the ballpark, he has been there forever since day one. He's you know he's an older gentleman in his seventies now, maybe even maybe even his eighties, but he's like an institution institution in Portland baseball. Oh, what else? You got um, one of the best food items you're going to find at Hadlock Field. I mean, they don't have a big fancy menu. They have a nice barbecue area out in left field and with the beer pub with a lot of craft brews. And Portland, oh, what a craft brew mecca that city is. So you can go out to the left field and get schnockered on some quality beers from <laughs> Sea Dog Brewery and Allagash. And the, the names go on and on in Portland. But uh, the most popular item there is an ice cream cookie sandwich which they called, you know, slugger biscuits, sea dog biscuits. And uh, yeah, you got, that's something you got to have when you're at Hadlock. Okay. So uh, yeah, but if you're going to Portland, don't just go up there for a ball game. I mean, it's, it's a nice place to see a game, but the city of Portland, like you were saying, Dave, if you like seafood, I think in Portland, it's one of those cities where because of the Casco Bay and all, all the islands and inlets and stuff, they got, quality seafood i think they actually reach in with this hand put it over this hand put it in a pot i mean it's that it's that fresh that's trivia awesome. question for for uh my canadian co-host here portland is actually the closest 
city on the Atlantic Ocean to Montreal. Hmm. So it's a very popular summer vacation spot for, you know, those from Quebec. Okay. If they're not scared off by, you know, J.B. Fletcher and exactly. Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you from repeated, we, we try to make it up to Portland at least, at least once a year. And uh, if you're going to go, if you haven't been to Portland before, you want to check out the Old Port. It's a, it's a district of Portland right on the waterfront. So you've got the quality restaurants there. If you like lobster, you like clams. I mean, you're not going to get good crabs there, but, you know, fresh fish, all that there. And there's, it's walkable. The streets are brick. And there's, it's an old town built from the colonial time. So it's one of those streets with the little crooked, craggy streets and little nooks and curves and hills and everything. So you'll find all kinds of shops and uh, restaurants and all kinds of little places to explore up in there. And in the summertime, fantastic place to be. So Portland used to be kind of a hidden gem. It's not so hidden anymore. The prices are creeping up compared to the, where they used to be. Um, art scene, Portland has a fantastic art scene. Uh, there's museums all throughout the town. There's a farmer's market where if you're into that kind of thing, that's open a couple times a week. Uh, we stumbled on that one time going to an AHL All-Star game in, you know, Jan late January, early February. And we said, oh, farmer's market. Cool. It's in this indoor, outdoor kind of pavilion. So, yeah, Portland's got a lot to do. Um, if you're a shopper, the headquarters of L.L. Bean are located 20 miles up the road in Freeport. So that's a quick little hop from Portland. Lots to do in any direction. I mean, the Bushes, uh, George George and Barbara Bush lived in the area in Kennebunkport, which is just a little ways down. Old Orchard Beach is close by where uh, it used to be an old amusement park on a pier. Burned down three or four times, but they keep rebuilding it and it's still there. So lots to do in the area. A lot of food, a lot of shopping, lots of attractions. Um, great place to be in the summertime yeah i find it's it's unfortunate for us we we kind of that was like a a, a travel point basically like it wasn't a destination it was yeah. uh we were coming from prince edward island and on our way to boston and you know that's a we probably could have done that in one day but that's a really really long haul mm. so you know why not you know stop in the middle throw some shopping in there yeah uh, you know, grab a ball game so you don't have to go shopping. And then we were we were on our way to Boston. So and Boston's only an hour and a half away from Portland. Yeah, it was we're, it was not far. It was pretty close. And then and then when we got to Boston, the, that that first day wasn't a total a total wash. And uh, driving down there was a little crazy. So um, it was nice to not have to drive in Boston like at the end of the day. You know, when it was it was still early and and we were still in in a good spot. So, um, but but hearing you talk about Portland as I have many times, um, kind of makes me kick myself that we we didn't do more there. Uh, and I I can't even tell you where we ate. I don't even think we ate anywhere special. <laughs> but uh, it's it's definitely on my list now of like I gotta go back there. I gotta do. I got to do something more in in Portland. That's one of the best things about stadium journeying for me and coming aboard and being almost 10 years with the company now. I've been to places, I mean, Portland doesn't qualify for this. I've been to Portland a hundred times. I used to live in Portland actually when I was a kid. Um, but the places I've checked out and visited that I would never have dreamed of going to otherwise. And just some fantastic places that I recommend to people now. Um, and as a New Englander, you know, people will tell me, all right, what's your what's your favorite place to be? And, you know, of course, you, you just Boston. if you like the big city, it's Boston. Boston's one of the best places in the country. But for me, I'll go to Portland over Boston any day. This smaller place, got that small town, it's got the great, it's got the food and the sports, which is why I go anywhere. Everything else is kind of secondary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, you've got the main Celtics. It's become really a, you know, Boston suburb almost and people from Maine hate it that the southern part of the state people in New Hampshire say this too kind of become a Boston suburb um so you've got the Maine Celtics play there at the expo you've got the Maine Mariners who are now the uh 
ECHL affiliate of the Bruins. They play at downtown at the uh, Cross Insurance Arena. So you've got lots of sporting options. There's no Division One anywhere in Portland, but you know you've, you've got a couple of Division Three schools if that's your thing. Um, the University of Maine is a little bit of a hike. I think it's two two and a half hours north up in Orono. But you know, U Maine's got a great, great Depending college hockey arena. <laughs> got a great college hockey arena there. So also worth a look if you're into that kind of stuff. We'll have to put it on the list to to head back. There you go. So that's a, a quick look at Hadlock Field. One and you know, like I said, a lot of people who've been to more ballparks than me put Hadlock right up there at the top. And like I said, it's all because of the great city it's located in. So that's our look at Hadlock Field. We're hoping to see you on the road again real soon. Cheers. Cheers.